So this is a, a first part of two videos I will show about the features of the Tektronix 1241 logic analyzer. Um, the first video is about uh, some basic features of this device and the second video is about uh, how to connect uh, this device to a PC using GPIB um, interface which is uh, provided uh, by the Tektronix uh, 1241 logic analyzer. So this is the first part and in the first part I will show some basic features uh, of this logic analyzer. Um, yeah, this is a um, um, logic analyzer itself but before going uh, into the device uh, I like to show um, the, the probes, the pots that are used by the 1241. Uh, Those pots are also usable for other Tektronix uh, logic analyzers. Um, there are different types of pots. Mm, this is the uh, um, P6460 uh, data acquisition probe. Um, this is the pot itself and uh, here we have a lead set. The lead set can be uh, disconnected from the uh, probe. Um, this is a, a, a special lead set because it's a diagnostic lead set. Um, there is a um, test uh, pattern generator inside of the Tektronix uh, 12 41, which produces some uh, useful and interesting demo patterns, byte patterns. Um, uh, using this uh, test pattern gen generator you can uh, try out all the functions of the logic uh, analyzer. It's a nice feature of it. Um, and this is the lead set um, which uh, can, is connected to the pod of course in the other uh, end um, is a connector which fits to a, to a connector uh, inside of the uh, logic analyzer itself. So this is a very special one. I have here um, a more common uh, part. Okay, you put it, put it here and uh, we have here some uh, nice, very small and very well uh, manufactured, very high quality um, clamps uh, to put it uh, at, for example, uh, pins of integrated uh, circuits. Okay, those uh, have been the probe and pot thing. And now we, we can have a, a more closer look to the logic analyzer itself. The logic analyzer has a um, touch screen here. It's, a, 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 it's from the 80s, but it already has a touch screen, which is a very nice feature. Um, and some uh, switches here uh, and there is a, a, a knob also it's, it's also possible to enter values using this knob um, we have some menu to configure uh, the logic analyzer how it will do the acquisition uh, all these things um, some uh, keys to enter uh, values uh, here hexadecimal values from zero to F uh, and some cursor keys and uh, um, of course um, the most important uh, thing is uh, to, to uh, start the, the data acquisition and uh, we have uh, also uh, here uh, buttons uh, for starting the data acquisition um, then the data acquisition is running until some trigger occurs um, uh, if this trigger does not occur for some reason you can uh, force the acquisition to stop at some point um, and there is some some kind of uh, auto acquisition uh, feature too so now I will switch on the device using the power button the device is uh, not silent uh, you can hear the fan quite loud um, this is uh, not a device you will um, have on your workbench and uh, run it for the whole day. It's, it's just too loud. Okay, you can uh, 
uh, it's possible to um, change uh, uh, the brightness of the screen. I have um, put it very um, at a very low value uh, because otherwise um, um, a part of the text would not be readable uh, here uh, during the video. Um, and uh, I will now show uh, some uh, basic uh, um, configuration points regarding the device. Um, we start in, with the configuration um, key of the configuration menu. Um, if you switch it on, um, it, it shows in what operation level the device is uh, running. It's here level zero, which is a, a very basic operation level. Uh, some of the um, co more complicated features are just left out in the menus. Um, I will uh, change it uh, to uh, a level three full operation. Um, and here we have the configuration. Uh, and there are four possible slots which can uh, hold acquisition cards and uh, in my device all four slots are filled. Two are filled with uh, nine channel uh, cards, acquisition cards, and uh, two of them are filled with 80 channel acquisition cards. Um, now I will change from the operation level to the time base menu. Uh, what we can see here is uh, it's possible to um, configure the time basis. Um, the device has two time bases. Here we configure, uh, we have uh, only time base one switched on as default. Um, and the time base one uh, can be synchronous or asynchronous. Here is asynchronous uh, is um, the default and the default is 20 nanoseconds. Um, it can be changed to some some other value, sorry, so it can be changed to some other value, 50, 100 nanoseconds or 50 microseconds, 20 milliseconds, one second is the uh, upper, upper um, value for the um, step width of the logic analyzer. Okay, and uh, now um, I, it wasn't my um, I, I intent, but I switched on uh, already uh, also the second time base, and I will uh, switch it off again. So, um, it's a little bit complicated uh, not not to put the arm in the picture. Okay, this is uh, what we can do in the uh, time base menu, roughly. Um, now I go to the me memory configuration. Um, here we can um, rearrange the cards um, inside of the uh, logic analyzer to, um, to uh, into a chain. Um, uh, for example, we have two nine channel cards. Um, each card uh, has nine uh, data inputs. And we can use those two cards as uh, 18 data inputs uh, with the acquisition depth uh, defined by the card, which is uh, 513 steps uh, without uh, glitches and 257 steps with glitches on. Um, or we can uh, put those two cards, nine channel cards together, so that we have nine inputs and 500 and 13 steps times two means 1036 uh, steps um, for the data acquisition. The same is uh, for the 18 channel cards. We also can chain them. Uh, and I believe if we, if we have um, four nine channel cards inside uh, of the device, uh, it would be possible to have uh, 2K uh, acquisition steps. This is not much. Uh, compared to uh, nowadays uh, uh, logic analyzers, uh, but for many purposes, it's um, it's quite okay. Okay, and the configuration here is uh, we have um, uh, both nine channel cards uh, not changed, uh, chained, sorry, not chained. So we have 18 uh, input pins, um, and uh, here glitches are switched on. I will switch them off. Sorry. 
Uh, wrong direction. So, and I switch them off. Hmm? Uh, now they are switched off. And we have uh, 18 input uh, pins and 513 acquisition steps. Um, if I change uh, it, uh, those two cards to a chain of, of, of two cards, I, I will do it. And now we have um, a chain from these two cards. Um, we have only nine input uh, pins, of course, but we have a uh, doubled acquisition depth of uh, 1,025. Uh, don't ask me why it's not uh, 1,026. Okay, um, this and some other things we can do in this menu and now I go to the channel grouping. Uh, the channel grouping is, uh, uh, you have uh, very much input pins, uh, 72 uh, um, is the maximum uh, here in, uh, for the device and um, uh, uh, usually uh, they are connected to some RAM address bus or to some uh, two-wire interface or whatever. Um, and uh, the channel grouping allows to connect different pins from different pots into uh, groups and uh, you can give the group a name. Uh, we have here uh, three predefined groups. One is group A, one is group B and one is control one. Those are the um, three predefined groups, uh, but you can name it uh, TVI or RAM A or whatever. Uh, uh, um, okay, you have only four uh, characters here, but uh, I think you get the idea. You can group uh, logically like you want uh, all the pins of the probes. Um, it's, a, it's a nice feature of, for the human uh, user. Um, and uh, moreover, we can define per group uh, how the um, uh, how the bits should be uh, um, presented on the screen. Uh, for example, the group A and also group B is presented as an hexadecimal value. Um, the control um, a group is displayed as, um, as a binary value. So we get here something like uh, um, FF or, or A0 or something for the hex values and for the bin values we will get something like 1101. Um, okay. Um, yeah, it's possible to add uh, further groups and such things, but this is not so important here. Um, this is all we can do uh, in the config uh, part. Uh, now I will switch to the trigger menu. Here we can define the trigger. The trigger is um, the event which um, um, stops the acquisition uh, process. Um, so what we have here, the predefined trigger is uh, we wait for um, an arbitrary value on, on our uh, pins and uh, uh, the, the trigger event. This is the trigger event. This is of course not usable. Uh, we have, would, if, if we like to have a real trigger here, we need to enter some real value here. We have the groups, group A, control um, and so on. and. Uh, uh, here we have an, an X means uh, not uh, not don't care don't care uh, um, it, this will um, this will trigger on any value uh, but um, I like to enter now some val real value like a zero for example so I um, put the a and uh, is zero here and this means uh, um, if um, uh, there is an a zero on the gr group a um, pins uh, and um, the uh, values of all other pins do not uh, um, I, I do not care um, and this will lead to the trigger event uh, the um, 1241 has 15 levels of trigger events with uh, it's, it's not only wait for but there are um, other things you can look what we have here we have a delay um, we have a jump if not uh, we have a jump if we have a reset if not we has a, have a reset if trigger if not trigger if wait for not wait for yeah okay now we are through um, so we have many um, uh, we have many possible uh, conditions here 
and uh, we can add uh, more trigger levels up to 15 trigger le uh, levels so i add just a level uh, which means um, the events are uh, sequentially um, checked so uh, i can enter here for example uh, i wait for uh, a0 in the in the data stream at group a um, and, and I know that um, very quickly after the A0, there comes an FF, for example, and this is the area where I'm interested in. So um, I enter now FF. Um, this, is, this is a new trigger condition. And um, so uh, the logic analyzer will wait, for example, for 5 million, uh, check 5 million bytes uh, till the A0 um, arises. Uh, then it will check uh, another 500,000 uh, bytes and then the FF uh, occurs. So I can, uh, uh, if, if I know the values where I'm interested in, uh, um, I can uh, uh, do a very, uh, um, very useful acquisition here. Okay, there is also an auto run uh, specification menu. Uh, don't ask me about this, I haven't uh, um, tried uh, this, this one so far. So I changed to the data uh, menu. Um, okay, so um, now um, um, error messages are coming in red. It says configuration error, which means uh, um, nine channel cards. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. So the, the, the current content of the data acquisition memory is uh, different from the configuration of the memory cards. This is my fault. I go back to the uh, memory configuration and okay, I, I have a chain and the content of the uh, acquisition memory, memory isn't uh, a chained one, so it doesn't fit. Um, uh, I would have to do an acquisition first, then everything is uh, okay. But uh, it's also possible just to um, uh, change this back back to uh, unchained uh, behavior and then I can go to data and the error is away. Um, and now we look inside uh, the data acquisition memory. The device has two um, uh, memories uh, that can hold uh, acquisitions. One is the, the real acquisition memory which we can see here and uh, we have another uh, um, memory which is called reference memory which is exactly the same as uh, the data acquisition memory and it's possible to copy data from the data acquisition memory to the reference uh, memory and for example to compare those two memories and to check the differences and all these things uh, this is possible but here we have a look uh, into the data acquisition memory we have uh, um, many of uh, zero values because i didn't have uh, done any acquisition so far um, this is a state table so we have um, the real values zero zero uh, in hexadecimal or uh, zero 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 and so on for binary values um, but we can change this uh, to the timing diagram uh, view which is uh, more uh, the expected one. It's, it's a bit, little bit boring here uh, because it's not um, uh, there are no changes at all. It's all zeros um, and uh, we have uh, a cursor um, uh, a cursor feature. I move it here. Uh, I can move this button and this leads uh, to changes uh, in this cursor here and according to the cursor position we can see the cursor is at step 82 of the data acquisition and uh, this means in, in, in a time value 1.64 microseconds. Um, okay, and, and I have here, this um, is uh, this green bar um, is the whole acquisition memory and the black uh, part is uh, the window we are just seeing here on the screen. Well, I did something. Um, so if I switch on the second cursor, so um, it, it, you can check uh, if I move the cursor to the left, also the window uh, moves, I go to the end and can go over the end. And now I'm at the beginning again. There's nothing at all before the trigger time point. And there's a small T, you, you will not see it, but this is a, a trigger time point. Okay, and, and I can see here the, the group A and the group uh, um, and, and the other groups like I want. This is the default uh, configuration of the view, but it of course can be changed. 
Okay, there is also the possibility to do something like expand in X direction or in this direction uh, to have a little bit uh, b better improved um, reading uh, if, uh, because um, the ups and downs, the ones and zeros will, will be very close together on this uh, little screen. Okay, this, um, this is um, a small part of what can be done in the data menu and I switch to the edit menu. Um, the device also has a possibility uh, not only to trigger uh, for um, for um, something related to a, to, to a triggering, but it also can be uh, um, weight for some global values which can be added here in, as a search pattern. Um, and uh, you can uh, um, edit values or, or change the content of the reference memory. Um, so uh, this um, is usable um, uh, if you want to uh, to do uh, like comparing those uh, two memories and then want to do some uh, little changes in the reference memory. Okay, and the final um, uh, configuration menu is uh, the utility part. Uh, or section, uh, we have a storage memory manager. Um, this means uh, uh, all the configuration we have entered here uh, during the preset before the acquisition um, uh, is now in the device. And if I switch it off, uh, it will be away. Um, and no, it is. This is not the case. It is possible to store all the data as a complete bundle, let's say, which is called a setup. And you can store the whole setup uh, as uh, like like a file um, at uh, several places. Uh, the uh, simplest place is uh, built-in uh, uh, NVRAM, non-volatile uh, RAM, which is uh, inside of the 1241. Um, this is a very small uh, storage. Uh, you can only put uh, two or three. Uh, setups uh, here, and I think it's impossible to put uh, uh, a complete data acquisition inside the built-in uh, RAM, uh, uh, non-volatile RAM. Um, but uh, at the back of the device, there's a possibility to add further, um, uh, yeah, let's say cartridges to expand uh, the functionality of the Tektronix 1241, and uh, I've got a 64 k byte RAM pack it's called. It's also non-volatile RAM which can be um, uh, plugged out and uh, taken away and plugged in later and the data is all uh, retains. Um, and it's of course possible to store setups and acquisition data or, the, or reference uh, memory content uh, uh, also on the RAM pack. Um, we can see here are many files already there. Um, the first line, uh, which is a setup, is um, in the run, in the, in the internal run, in the, and um, all the other files um, are located on the RAM pack. Yeah, and it's, it's possible you have some uh, file-oriented um, menu points here, delete file, load, save, uh, and such things. Um, and the final point uh, is the COM port control. And uh, this is um, it's also possible to uh, plug in a communication cartridge into the TEC 1241. I have a GPIB uh, cartridge. Um, uh, GPIB means General Purpose Interface Bus, as far as I remember. Uh, and it's a defined um, interface to connect uh, usually um, uh, measurement devices, uh, very often measurement devices, to other, to controlling devices, uh, of course, usually this is a PC. Um, and we have some features of the GPIB uh, which we can control here. We can say uh, my device is um, online or offline regarding GPIB. Um, we can define the address um, where um, the GPIB bus defines um, addresses. And we can have many devices with different addresses, of course, on the bus. Uh, and this is uh, address must be unique. Uh, my device has them um, as default the, um, two as the device address, and we can define them message termination string. It's not so uh, important. Um, here it's the yeah, um, 
um, at the bottom of the screen we have some buttons which are also related to GPIB. The first is request setup upload, um, request setup download, the second request reference memory upload and so on. Um, and if I press this button this will uh, create an inter uh, a service request uh, to the controller. The controller is the PC. Um, and it contains, uh, it will send some information to the PC um, and the PC uh, um, uh, reads this information and this information is, uh, for the example, for the request that up upload uh, would be a, a command code for the controller um, and the controller then knows what to do. Uh, he understands that um, the uh, 1241 uh, will uh, likes to upload some uh, setup data and usually the PC has some kind of uh, application running uh, which knows okay this is a Tektronix 1241 uh, setup uh, data set uh, and um, for example will be able to store it on uh, the hard disk of the computer and the same is with um, with acquisition uh, memory or reference memory and of course you can uh, also download from the PC old reference memory images to compare them to some uh, new uh, data acquisition. Uh, I will uh, later on uh, um, come back to the GPIB uh, functionality of the device, of course. Yes, so I think um, this is enough for the um, uh, for the first part, uh, some of the basic features of the uh, 1241. And the next part uh, will be um, uh, um, I will um, get some simple uh, data acquisition from the built-in test pattern generator to have some data to play with um, and uh, then I will connect the 1241 to my PC using uh, a GPIB uh, interface uh, which is homebrew built by me and uh, I have also written some uh, Java based uh, Eclipse based application which is able to uh, uh, upload, um, um, set up data and reference memory data uh, to the PC. Um, it's a Linux Linux PC, and to um, show few process uh, this data at the PC. Okay, this ends the first part of the videos.